Oh my god, you guys! Oh my god, I just thought of my next, like, save-up purchase. It's gonna be a suede hat. Who's the god of ADHD? For real. I hate you. <laughs> anyway, so, welcome back everybody to our podcast. Um, in case you haven't noticed, we are just gonna sit back and we're just gonna have a discussion Nice, chill, relax, no exaggerated yelling or gay screaming we'll or... See. I <laughs> make no promises. <laughs> you know, anything None. like that. But I, 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 uh, I figured, you know, since the Midsummer movie review um, and how everybody was starting it, really get into like their, or I guess our own spiritual own journey, spiritual journey. Yes. Um, maybe we should just have like a nice relaxed discussion and just kind of express it a little bit. And it would also be like a good way to kind of explain <gasps> like, Oh my God, right you guys, I just idea. thought of the perfect title for this podcast. God of ADHD. Where God of at? ADHD. God In of ADHD. the land God. of gods and monsters. That is actually uh... pretty good. No, I, don't want to look I told you. I anyway. know it's so good. <laughs> anyway, so yes, we have done some massive exploring, and like I'm just gonna say, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do this You're discussion welcome. because like it's the funniest thing in the entire world watching how it developed. <laughs> <laughs> we like, from the beginning? so basically here's what it is i'm just you know relax and having a good time at my house by myself because i fucking love that um and i get like a text from kelsey and it's going omg you just missed the most intense conversation and i was like the fuck are you talking about and she's like me and joshua we were just talking and like I don't talk like that. Thank you. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. Bottom uh, of the line is that apparently these two had a fucking phone call without me, which... It wasn't a... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Why are we starting there? I thought we were starting at the beginning. No, this, this, this in is... In the beginning. This no. is the beginning. Because no, it's not. On, shut up and listen. No, it's not. It's not the beginning, it's My story... Though. This Fine, is but my story. Okay. Okay, but for the oh. record, me and Kelsey will go back to the actual beginning once you're done. So they had their whole spiritual moment on the phone, and then it just went wow. It just went wow. Okay, because then it was the whole talk of like, what happens after death, and then it's the whole talk of, what if there's something else out there, and then it's the whole discussion of, hey, I found a god, and it's like, oh, all right. Okay, so now it's probably your guys' official beginning. The beginning, well, Kelsey, I think, is our Honestly, I feel like you page. tell it the best. Um, so you take it away from that one fateful afternoon. Really? That's where we're going? Because I thought it was the beach. Ooh, good point. That was more of like... Um, excuse me, this is my story. This is my beginning. <laughs> I mean, that would have been the start when I told you guys about the dream. Yeah, because for me, like, for me, it was when we went on the beach vacation, you, uh, Bree, Josh, Isaac, and I, and, um, Joshua came to us very vulnerable one night, I think it was, like, the first night, and explained some dreams and thoughts that he had been having. Do you want to explain them? Because I don't remember all of them. Well, no, basically, I was having, um extremely like realistic dreams about going to places and visiting times and being somebody else that I couldn't explain and I tried looking it up and um you know uh, I found out that um it was pretty rare to have these type of dreams especially like with vivid color being able to remember um you know really large chunks of the dream um and so like I had thought that I was an atheist for a very long time and I was having to come to terms with maybe that's not what I believe because I can't really explain these dreams. Yeah, I feel like that's a good synopsis, wouldn't you say? Yeah. He he opened up to us 
with that, and I'm not going to lie, at first I was like, okay, I think he's really having these experiences, but I don't know if I personally believe that it's spiritual or anything like that. But it was on my mind for like months after the trip. And I think that trip was like a huge thing for us in many different ways, not just spiritual. But um, then this leads us to the afternoon, as I like to call it, where... Josh comes over to my house, explains some changes that are going to be happening with him, like moving across the country. And we, did we invite Brie over before we had the talk or did we have part of the talk before she got there? No, 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 no. So we had invited Brie over and we didn't actually start having the talk until we had grabbed food in town And we were at our favorite store. Oh, yes, because you wanted and you were talking about crystals. And so you decided to show me crystals. And so we went to um, a place in town where you can get locally sourced crystals and stones. And we got some crystals. Me, my first ever, like, I think five crystals. Um, And we ended up. And I went through and I explained how some of them help me when I'm feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Um, And. We did some palm reading. Yes, Josh read my palm in the parking lot of a cannabis shop. So that was that was something. It definitely kind of blew my mind because I was like, oh, okay, uh, this feels a little real. That that's fine. And then we went back to my house and we continued having conversation, which led into talks about astrology, um, psychic stuff, like just crystals. Like normal- Crystal. Tarot. Tarot, yes, yes, yes. More palm reading Um, happened. What is consciousness? Like, what are we meant to do with our lives? Like, really intense, I would say, conversations that shifted our friendship somewhat. Yeah. And then I think, what was it, two days after that, that me and you, Josh, had that four hour phone call Uh at like midnight where we discussed, like, that I had been having thoughts about whether or not there was no 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 so what happened first was remember when we started our phone call like i was telling you about some of the things that i was feeling and then you just started asking me questions and then every answer i was giving you you were like okay hold on really sorry it was yeah okay oh wow okay i forgot about that i just remember us having a conversation that led up to like talking about but what happens after we die and our thoughts on it and mm-hmm. whether or not there are higher beings. Cause like you guys have to understand Josh and I were like ferment, like ooh, very atheist because you know, Christian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so like having this conversation was intense. And then we started talking about experiences that we had been having over the past couple of days since the afternoon, which kind of led to us finding our first God and goddesses. Be goddesses yes. Uh, and it's kind of been a crazy adventure ride, roller coaster, whatever you want to call it, ever since. Because it's led into like us finding more gods and goddesses and getting into other things. Do you wanna do you wanna mm-hmm. go, Josh? Because I don't want to talk anymore. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I've always had this strange draw to the Greek pantheon. Mm-hmm, so um to be honest, it felt like a natural fit. And funny enough. I was led into it through the astrology, just looking up, you know, Leoisms, I guess. Um, And I kept running across Apollo and I was asking Kelsey some questions and then she was asking me some questions and, you know, one thing led to another, led to another, uh, might be leading to another. And, um, you know, I'm no expert by any means, but I feel a stronger connection to this than the 16 years that I was forced to be part of the Christian Theoc person. Same. I was just thinking about this before we had the phone call, like how I doing what I do, like I work with mainly the Greek gods, like I'm mainly a Hellenic polytheist and everything. And like some of the stuff I do is very traditional. Like I follow certain holidays and give certain offerings and shit. But I feel like what I should have felt like when I was going through my born again Christian phases that I had multiple times, like this is like the happiness that I thought I was supposed to feel with Christianity that I never felt with it. Uh, Same. It also (laughs) almost feels comforting that uh, these gods aren't expecting perfection. Because they themselves are not perfect. So it's... A definitely a change of pace than what I thought or even assumed it was going to be like. Yeah. Free. What? 
what are some of your thoughts? Well, my experience is obviously like different from your guys's, but it's like also different in the aspect that I didn't actually grow up religious. So like most of my life was not doing any form of worship. I mean, other than that little phase where I was like Wiccan for like a couple months, but we don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> but I mean, like that to me is probably like the weirdest part in all of this is the thought of no that's the wrong word no maybe that is the right word worship like of any kind in any form like that that to me is like the hardest thing to accept but i can definitely relate when i say that like it feels absolutely natural to have the gods that i have a little spooky though <laughs> A little spooky, at times, a little I would spooky, agree. A little spooky, but it's okay. This is a spooky podcast, after all. Yes. Also, it's really fun that I get to collect rocks again. Yes, yes, yes. She has 87 rocks. No, I don't. <laughs> I have 78. Same numbers. Oh, yeah. You do not get to rock shame me. 18 rocks and one pillar. Oh, yeah, I have a pillar. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot to say about the whole, like, getting into it other than, yeah, it just felt really natural. It wasn't scary to get into it, really. Um, it wasn't overwhelming. It wasn't really, like, that much of a change of pace. It was just like, oh, okay. It Let's just move me. on to this. But yeah, the, the the thing of the fucking worship thing, like that, is really hard for me to keep up with. I, I'll 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 admit to that. <laughs> That's hard for me to remember. I told you just once a week because you're busy and forgetful. Yes. And you can do so many things to the like as devotional acts to them. Like, obviously, like my main ritualistic offering shit is mainly for like Zeus and Amphitrite and Hecate but like sometimes I'm like oh I'm gonna clean the house let me devote this act to Hestia the goddess of the of the hearth oh I feel like having a good time let me put on some ABBA and dedicate that to Apollo but like it's, my it's boy fun. yes I love Apollo so much. he's so fun um but it's just little things you don't have to go all out with it that's what I kind of like like just being happy and doing self-care and shit for some of them like aphrodite loves people who practice oh, wow. self-care it's not just sex and romance but wait how many do all... you have like huh? uh, how... i i totally said that wrong um how many gods do you each have is that the way I want to I have three. I have three main ones, but like I said, I'm more tradition. Like I'm more of a traditional polytheist. So like, I worship the whole Greek pantheon, but I have like my three, my top tier that I spend the most time with. Because like I believe in literally all the gods except for the Abrahamic one. I don't. I don't think that one's real. But I mainly worship the Greek one because that's just the ones I vibe with the most. And I've always, I've always vibed with them. I just didn't realize how much. Yeah, that's the weird part. What do you mean? Well, for me, that's the weird part, is, like, how comfortable it was. Like, obviously, I'm gonna go with the flow with it. Yeah. Hi, hello, water sign. Um, but it's still, like, every now and then, like, I'll, like... Because I have, like, my altars, like, kind of above my bed. Mm -hmm. So I have, like, my, uh... Wow, I blanked out on your name. My bad. Um, I have Fire. Artemis. <laughs> She's on top of like a crate and everything and she's got her candles and her crystal goblet and all of her stones and stuff and um then I got like my girl Nyx. How you doing, baby? And she's all over with like all my spooky and dead shit. <laughs> yeah, Hecate's candle is like literally right next to like graveyard moss. My graveyard dirt's not on my altar, but it's next to it, like the part where Hecate's is. And my skull. All the spooky shit is by her, and then all my seashell shit is by Amphitrite and Zeus. I promise I'm gonna get you more stuff. Oh my god, hang on. Can I just like geek out for a second? Go for it. Okay, okay. So I only had like, I have crystal goblets for both of the altars, and um, I actually like, I only had one and I put it for Artemis, and I was like, I'm really sorry, I'm gonna get you one, but let me go grab it and I'm gonna like. You guys gotta hear it, okay? Just hang on one second.
<laughs> so you guys know how to like figure out like what true crystal is, right? Yes, yes, yes. Joshua, do you know? Mm. I'm pretty sure I do, but hit me with it anyway, because I'm sure that's useful information. <laughs> so I learned this from like a little old lady that I used to take care of. And in order to like figure out like crystal goblets versus like glass goblets, all you do is you flick them. Like that's all you do. Mm -hmm. And like a crystal. I love that. Will sound like it's ringing. So I found this one at Goodwill. Thank you, Goodwill. Love you so much. And when I heard it, because I was flicking all the glasses, but like when I heard that one, I was like, oh, mommy's going to like this one. <laughs> like, I fucking thought. <laughs> Automatically, when you say mommy, I just think of the vampire lady from Resident <laughs> Evil now, instead of who you actually mean. Yes, I mean my mommy. She's my mommy. But um, yeah, and then like, I guess like my like small little acts of like devotion is like, sometimes my kid will pick flowers and like, if they're purple flowers, I give them to mommy. And then if they're like any other flowers, I give them to Artemis. Yeah. And like the first time that I did that, like actually kind of scared the shit out of me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I put, uh, I don't know what they're called, but they're like these little bluebell type flowers on a stalk and they're purple and I set it down and I was like here you go like there you go I don't I don't know what else to say here you go and that like that branch of flowers looked fresh for two and a half days before it started to wilt like no water it wasn't even like cut proper it was like literally ripped off the stem looked fresh for two and a half days it was spooky. Yep. <laughs> a lot of fucking spooky things have been happening like uh when we first got into the god the goddesses and shit brie lost her wallet and i decided that like i was going to pray to hikate because that was the only goddess i had at the time to ask her for her help and so the next day we found her wallet we had to go all the way to a different town to go find it because we had had like a girl's day and like went to a crystal store and blah 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 just had a moment and that's where she left it and like the entire day we had just felt like how would you like drained exhausted, exhausted dead i was frustrated and exhausted and just emotionally dry which is very unusual for me i can i can hold on to emotions for a really long time oh yeah we were we were dead to the world and it wasn't until i gave an offer we we i should say we gave an offering of thanks of the to akate of like a little cheesecake with honey on it and we left it at a, at a crossroads that literally all our energy like just automatically came back and we weren't fucking tired anymore. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as we left the crossroads, yep, we were feeling better. So like word of advice, um, try not to use your own energy to uh, do work with the gods or do magic because you're going to be tired and it's not a fun experience. And I don't like it. Oh, I've also started seeing shadow people, which is great. I love that. That's spooky and super fun. Mm hmm. Pretty sure Bree's next. Pretty sure Josh is going to get it too because out of all of us, his third eye is the most open. So um, be prepared for that, buddy. It's a good time. Mm. <laughs> yeah, especially since you work with uh, the Morrigan, so. Which is very um, interesting. It is kind of, I will say, kind of cool to be working with a deity that doesn't necessarily require physical offering. Yeah. Well, like, my offerings aren't that hard to get, especially since I have so many rocks. <laughs> Yeah, I just, like, usually the gods, if you can't do anything, at least with the Greek gods, they just want some frankincense, and I have that, so I'm like, I'm gonna light you frankincense. Or, like, Hecate likes, you know, cake and eggs and shit, and today was, like, her uh, Hecate's Stepanon. I don't know how to say things correctly, so if I said that wrong, I'm sorry. But it's a day where we, like, honor her, and we clean the house and everything, and I gave her an egg as an offering, because that's what she likes. And tomorrow is like Numnia, which is like the first day of the lunar month. And all I'll have is like, like I said, incense. So you don't have to give them anything big or anything. Like they understand this isn't, it's not the Catholic church. Which, which is the church that like, where you have to like pay in order to stay in the church and go to heaven. Is that the Catholic church? Yeah, well, I think that's most churches. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I like... Okay, my church never required tithing, so I don't know. We never had that. Every Wait, church that... that I've been into has done that. They, they've had offering plates, but, like, you didn't have to do it, and you wouldn't get in trouble for it. Like, I think I've only seen that at the Mormon church, and I know the Catholic church does something with money. I don't know. I could be wrong. I just know my church didn't do that. Do you want to add anything random, Josh? Yeah, you've been quiet. Um, I don't know. Um, just, like, I would... I would recommend everybody go at your own pace if you're interested. You know, read some stuff. That's always helpful. Um, yes. <laughs> Do not jump into magic. I haven't even started doing magic. If you're interested in the witchcraft side of it, like, obviously, you don't have to do witchcraft to be spiritual. But don't do magic right away. Like, I... Mm, don't be I'm hasty awake. and don't be procrastinating. <laughs> Don't fuck with clothes. Look up what, what practices are open and closed because, like, I'm sorry. If you're not Native American, you don't get to use white sage. Um, if you're not from, I don't know, Africa, Puerto Rico, Haiti, no, you can't do voodoo or hoodoo. Like, those are those are examples of closed practices. And if you do do any open practices, be respectful. Learn about the current culture and climate learn about the ancient culture from which that religion came from just don't be a dick don't be a colonizer and take your time and obviously you don't have to be spiritual either i think everyone has their own path i think some people are meant to be happy as i guess atheists or christians or whatever but um, whatever makes them feel at peace yeah whatever makes you feel at peace and as long as you're not hurting truly Hurting anyone, you're an asshole. So. Oh, yeah. My altar is so cute, but I'm not going to show the people. <laughs> and it's like dollar store prayer candles and like this goblet that I got from when I was in my Wiccan phase, which we don't talk about. <laughs> and it's not a good time. No hate to Wiccan. It's just, uh, oh. not for me. Yeah. It wasn't a good yeah. fit. No. And they don't, Wiccanism itself doesn't seem to have respect for what's open and what's closed so no very cultural appropriation but it, you i think you can be a wiccan without doing that part so like no hate i'm gonna expand a little bit more because you know you you went into the whole like don't rush it but like make sure you do your thing but i'm i'm gonna make sure y'all understand like if you do actually get into this and you like make a half-ass like devotion thing like do not procrastinate on your fucking research. I can tell you this from personal experience. It's not okay. Because <laughs> they will fucking scare you. <laughs> and don't get your, like, information, like, all of your information from, like, something like TikTok. Because there be people on there that are saying some stupid shit that isn't true. And once again, like, you don't have to, like, to like start your spiritual path you don't have to be into something like deities or magic or anything like that like you could just be like shadow work and crystals or in tarot or whatever like it doesn't have to you don't have to fit the mold of what somebody else is doing you just have to find like to what's spiritual. comfortable for you because like yeah you kelsey you have your tarot cards i love them and then joshua the frick is it your palm reading and your goddamn scary ass fucking josh is just a psychic okay heart like... reading <laughs> bullshit that i'm still slightly annoyed that we had to touch on that but whatever yeah and like me i got rocks <laughs> <laughs> i have rock i have rocks um, but like, it's, it's whatever you guys are comfortable with. Like, you don't have to go all out. You don't have to like follow a certain resume. Like you can just do whatever. Like I find peace in putting flowers on shelves and then lighting a candle like once a week and meditating for a little bit. And also like body slamming myself on my bed to stare at the 30 some odd rocks that are currently on my windowsill. And picking out which I recommend one I want to meditation carry for, me. for everyone, by the way. Yeah, it's meditation is nice. for everyone. It is yeah. really nice. Like in, in like you could do it for like a spiritual reason or health reason or like peace of mind. Like it, it just, yeah, that shit is scientifically recommended. It's so. nice. It's good. It calms your freaking head. Just do yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Just do it. Just also do pretty it. rocks just are pretty. Yeah, even if you don't believe in, like, the spiritual properties of rocks or whatever, like, they're, they're still so pretty. pretty. <laughs> they're so just pretty. Make sure you know, 
just make sure you know where they come from. Try not to like buy from a sor- from a store that doesn't source where they're from because that just screams child labor. Um, so just be thoughtful on where you can get them. Like we're very lucky, even in our shitty ass conservative small town, like we can get locally sourced crystals yes. and stones. So yes, hopefully more people will have that available to them. If you want to get into that part, like obviously the and, only thing I'm recommending for everyone is meditation. Yes, absolutely. And like, while I may have a large collection, and practicing some self love. Yes, self love. Oh yes, and self love. Yes. <laughs> but like, I might have a big collection. Okay, I know I've been saying it a lot, but like, I've actually been collecting rocks for like a really long time, like a yeah. really stupid long time, and that's how come I have the collection that I have. Um, because, uh, going rock shopping with Kelsey and Josh, like, kind of made me nervous, and I was, like, cutting back, so I only get about seven or eight every time. Yeah. But that's just something I like to do. I, I like the pretties. I like the shinies, and some of the pretties and the shinies, like, feel good when you, like, carry it around, and I've Mm. noticed that, like, most of my rocks, like, unconsciously all have, like, a thumbprint or a space that my thumb can go because one of my, um, anxiety ticks, things, what is it, habit? There we go. I don't know why I thought ticks. But, like, I like to rub things. And if I don't, I'll rub my finger and I'll actually, like, develop a callus or callus on it. So I, I, I like to carry rocks to rub them. So it's It's calming to them all. Yeah. So it's, it's however you want to do it and... Whatever brings you peace and a small sliver of joy in this shitty world that we live in. It's just crazy to think about how when we started this podcast, like, how different we were. And that was only, like, a year ago. Like, we weren't spiritual at all. We were kind of just, I guess, going through the motion. It's just weird to think about, like, how much people can change. COVID has, like, changed me a lot. I don't know. Um, Yeah, I think I would agree. Same as well. But, like, that's kind of why we've part of the reason besides josh moving across the country why our uploads are fucking chaotic is because we went through this and we're still going through this and it's just a lot sometimes emotionally and you don't want to you don't want to fucking record an episode you don't want to do research for that said episode at least i don't sometimes sometimes i just don't want to do it and sometimes we just don't have the time to do it because we're living in different time zones and we all have jobs and it's crazy. <laughs> Me. <laughs> what? Just, I'm like, I tick all of those. I don't really have a lot of time. I'm working all the time. And most of the time, I'm just depressed. <laughs> we love that. Maybe That's you so should do some shadow work. <laughs> start a journal. <gasps> Bree, you should start a journal. I have okay, never totally been able to. No, I have never been able to keep a journal in my entire life. Okay, we'll fix that. Uh, I have been trying. Do you know how many, like, barely started journals that I have? Okay, but you're not... Okay. I have a thing that's been helping me start a journal, because I have a problem, too. And it's, like, 30 days of, like, journal prompts for reflection and self-care. And I think if you did that, because you don't have to write, like, big entries or anything. It's just, you know, responding to these prompts. I think it would be beneficial to you. And it'll help you keep... keep Honestly, I'm totally doing something like that right now. And it's really helping me. It, yeah. That's it's... fantastic. And I'm very happy for your journey. Brianna, you cannot be stubborn. You have to do self-love and self-care. Remember, we recommended that for everyone. I've been meditating. Okay, but that only goes so far, my love. Uh, well, you I talked to, to you guys more. Oh, yay. What an... Mm, you know what? <laughs> Free, is this you talking or the inner saboteur? <gasps> I feel like she comes out a lot because it's like, I tried mm-hmm. and it doesn't work, so I'm not going to do it anymore. You guys are saying it like I only do it once. You Okay, but you still stop. Uh-huh. I'm not saying you only do it once. Free, I think journaling and shadow, you have to do shadow work. Shadow work would be good for you. Okay, this was supposed to be, this was supposed to be, this, this, this was supposed to be a nice chill conversation this not a, nice a, a very not nice conversation. A lecture for brianna <laughs> <laughs> like get the fuck off my back anyone who's listening right now um the advice that we're giving to brianna i feel like you could take two start a journal 
keep up with it the best as best as you can. And if it works I for you, that's really beneficial. good. If you can keep doing it, that's wonderful. If you tried, that's okay too. It's whatever works for you. Um, I would love to recommend positive self affirmation. Yes. It's a really easy step to practicing daily self love. One hundred percent. I know that some it's people have like gratitude them. journals that do that too, where they like do positive affirmations and whatever. But you could also just like wake up in the morning and like look in the Feeling mirror and be like, like I'm a bad bitch. I'm a bad yeah. bitch and I deserve the best. Exactly. That's a positive affirmation. Or if something nice happens to you that day, like celebrate it, you know, be like, I, I love that this happened. Like, yay. I love that this happened and I feel like I deserve that. Yeah. Love yourself. That's one thing I'm trying to work on is working on self-love and less self-deprecation. Cause like I kind of process things through like self-deprecation humor, which isn't yeah, very beneficial I mean... for your mental health. So I'm trying to not do that as much. And I know a lot of people do that. So like having, doing things like talking to myself in the mirror and journaling and stuff has been helping, helping me a little bit. Anybody else have anything else they want to say? Um, Like if any of this is resonating with you, if you're feeling like you could use a little bit of self-love, maybe a little bit of meditation, some time to yourself, um, I would say give yourself the opportunity to try it. Yeah. You won't know until you try. Don't give in to your inner saboteur. This is we not don't. A it's not a lecture. I'm talking to the audience and you. I'm talking to everybody. <laughs> See, that's what I'm fucking talking to. Everybody. About. Everyone. Stop it. That's, you know what? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Are we, All right, are we, you guys, thank you for coming to our episode. We hope that you got something out of this today. Um, and maybe you feel like you know us a little bit better. And, you know, yeah. what more could we want or ask? All right. Well, thanks you. Thank you. Fuck. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you, guys, for listening. Uh, make sure to check our little description box where I will leave information on ways where you can help out Black Lives Matter, the Asian Pacific Islander community, and Palestinian. Other than that, I think we're good. All right. Well, adios. Bye. Bye. Bye.